Hiya, I'm Rupert from the Kite Surf Centre and today we're going to give you a buyer's guide all about wetsuits. So, um, the first thing is types of wetsuits. You have full suits, like these ones here, so that's long arm, long leg. Then you also have shorty suits, so that's short arm, short leg. Long arm, short leg wetsuits, and then long arm, over knee wetsuits, so many different lengths, just depending on what your your need is for um, the sport you're doing and the time of year. Um, so that's the, the kind of the main thing about kind of what going from which what you're looking for, and then the next part will be thickness. So on almost all wetsuits, they'll have a number on the arm. Um, so five four five three three two. The first number is the thickness of the chest and the leg panels. Um, the second number is going to be the panel under the arm and often on the shoulder. So that's in millimeters. So the first number is going to be a five mil will be five mil on the chest and legs, and then the three will be under the arm or on the shoulder. So obviously in winter we're looking for thicker wetsuits, and in summer you'll be looking at thinner wetsuits. So in the UK, we mostly use 5mm wetsuits throughout the year, especially with kite surfing, where you're in kind of the wind sports. Um, so that's like a 5.3 or a 5.4. Um, and only in the summer, you'll be dropping down to, to thinner suits. Um, and even then, lots of people will still be staying around the 4mm wetsuits rather than going to shorties or anything like that. Um, when it comes to closures of wetsuits, so that's how the in and out of them. First of all, you have front zip systems such as this one here. So that's a front opening wetsuit. There you go. In the top, so zips at the front, goes over your head and then a nice large opening to get in there. You also have back zip wetsuits. So this is probably more familiar to um, most people. So unzips at the back, opens up, and then you clamber in there. And then the higher end models will have these back wings that go over your head as well. And then zips up with the long leash at the back. The advantages with a front zip wetsuit is there's less area for the water to get in. So once it's zipped up, it's nice and sealed. You've got a full neck seal around your neck. So that um, means there's no break in it especially if you're ducking under waves and things like that, stops the water getting in, um, and then there's less area for the water to come in. With the back zip wetsuit, you have see, usually a little larger open to get into, so if you're a little bit less flexible, and that can really help. Um, and as I mentioned, with the higher end wetsuits, they will have the back wing that goes over the head, and then that's glued down the side here so any water that does come through that zip hits that, drains out and comes out the drain holes. So with both front and back wetsuit, if there is any water that gets through the entrance system, the closure systems, there's usually a drain hole either at the bottom there or over on the shoulder of a front zip wetsuit. You can also get front zip wetsuits with a double front zip, so that's where it will come all the way across and opens up like this. This can be really handy if you're looking for a front zip wetsuit but are a little less flexible. That gives you a bit of bigger opening to get into. So after you kind of worked out if you want a full, full suit, short suit, thickness, um, and which entrance system you're looking for, the main next thing you're looking, going to be looking for is the material. So. There's a few types of material that's used in neoprene. First of all, there's the single lining. So that's used on chest panels and back panels. This is really good at blocking the wind um, and to keep you really nice and warm. It can be quite thick. And some of uh, models we use things like air neoprene, so it's almost like honeycomb in there to keep it nice and warm. The downside to single lining is it's a little, more, a little bit more delicate so more prone to damage from stones or fingernails and things like that, which is why we don't have it all over. Um, 
The other material is double lining, so that's where it has the polyester outside and inside. Um, and that's the material used throughout most wetsuits, other than the chest and, and back panels. Um, with all the materials, with the more entry level material, you'll find that it's a little bit stiffer, you won't get quite so much flex from it, especially with entry level suits down towards kind of like the leg area, you'll find that's a little bit less stretchy. And as you work your way up through higher models, you'll find that the material starts to get stretchier um, and all of a sudden become be much lighter to make the suit actually lighter overall and absorb less water um, and much softer as well so when you are putting that wetsuit on it's really nice and soft and when you uh, have it on it's a lot less um, restraining so you've got a lot more flexibility. Um, the key, obviously, key next thing is obviously not just the material but how it fixes the material together so the, the stitching, the gluing, the, the seams. So most suits from uh, kind of en entry level upwards, we'll be looking at obviously starting off with stitching, and then they'll be going from flat lock stitching, which is like this. That's very similar to what you'll have on t-shirts and jumpers. So this goes the same on the inside and the outside. So it's the two piece of material to stitch together, nice and strong, gives you some flexibility. However, it does make a lot of holes in the wetsuits. That's lots of areas for water to ingress. So good for your summer suits, but not going to be excellent in the middle of winter. Above that is known as GBS or glued and blind stitched. So on the outside, it actually looks quite similar, but the material is actually put and pushed next to each other and then um, glued so that on the inside, as you can see here, it looks completely sealed. This will, after a fair amount of use, make a few small holes in it and you'll have some ingress there. Um, and you'll often find suits with this will have taping on the cuffs and some points in the, in the chest and things inside. Um, so that's what's called critical taping. Um, so just areas where it could get damaged to give it a little bit more strength. Up from glued and blind stitch, which like I said is fairly common throughout uh, wet seats, you will have liquid seams. So that's where it's glued and blind stitched, but also has a thick layer of uh, rubber and glue placed on the outside to keep it uh, much stronger so it doesn't have that ingress down the line. So it's a really nice uh, way of keeping it sealed. Another similar method is going for a tape seam. So that's where on the inside of the suit, you have glued and blind stitched as before, and then you have this extra tape added on as well. So then that gives it the same appearance on the outside, but a much better seal on the inside. So similar method to the liquid seams, the uh, tape seam makes the suits much longer lasting. On the interior of the suits, that's another main uh, way where you see the difference between the entry level all the way up to the top suits. So the entry level suits you'll find will be fairly similar on the inside as the outside just with that standard jaw line neoprene. As you work your way up they'll start to have some fleece lining coming into it making it nice and warm. Often that will just start on the chest panels um, and then as you work your way up the ranges, they'll be over more of the body until you end up with a suit such as this, which is obviously a much more plush fleece lining as well. Um, often these will be wicking fleece lining, so they'll um, take the water away from your body so then as it drains out, it keeps you a little warmer and it will feel like it's dried faster and there'll be much more fleece lining throughout the suit, so not only all over the back and all over the front. So a really nice warm suit, so great if you're going out in winter. After um, after you've worked what kind of suit you, you're looking for, um, the main thing about wetsuits is all about the fit. So when you're trying a wetsuit on, you want it to fit as close to you as possible. You don't want any rolled areas because as soon as there's creases in your suit, especially kind of around the arm or around the waist, where it might be too baggy, um, that's going to fill with water and stop, stop it being um, 
efficient and it's not going to keep you quite so warm but also much more likely for it to rub and be less comfortable. She wanted to fit you all, all over, be really quite tight fitting, so a pair of leggings. You don't want any folds, you don't want any creases. Wetsuits always start very tight. Obviously they are rubber so they will stretch. So what you don't want to do is get a wetsuit that's slightly too big at the start because it's only going to get bigger. Um, and yeah, you want it to be a very tight fitting suit all over. You just don't want it to restrict your movement. So as long as you can still move around, then that's going to be a correct fit for you. Um, just make sure when you are trying to on that all the knees are in the correct positions um, and that the, that then gives you the crutch area in the right place and the chest area in the right place so that it's all stretched out evenly. In terms of pricing, wetsuits will start with the entry level suits. That's There's kind of a few key things that will affect the pricing of uh, wetsuits and that's uh, materials. So as I mentioned, uh, entry level suits with stiff tougher material will be cheaper after that then uh, it will be seams um, and then the lining and how many panels so not only is it the materials the lining um, and the seams used that might affect a suit but also the size of the panels so having large panels um, on wetsuits makes it m more comfortable um, however it means there's more off cuts so chances are the price will be higher so often the high-end suits such as this one here as you see has a long panel all the way from chest down to knee which allows more stretch because the material will stretch much better than the seam tool so that's everything about how to try on um, a wetsuit what to, what to look for and what's going to be best for your needs